Well, good morning. It's great to be here with you guys. Um, just before we get into today's talk, I uh, just want to piggyback off of what Jen mentioned on the father-daughter dance. Um, I want to show you a quick photo, and I can get away with this because my kids aren't in this service. So um, this is a photo from 2008, and uh, this was our second year of doing the father-daughter dance. And uh, the girls on my right here, uh, they are driving now. And um, so it's crazy how much development and the uh, passage of time. And the only reason I'm showing that is we've been doing the father-daughter dance for 10 years or so. And uh, it has just been a great, great time for dads and daughters, something that everybody looks forward to. And uh, we would love to have you be a part of it. We had one year that I was dancing with uh, one of my daughters. Some other guys were dancing with their daughters. And uh, I remember looking around, and I had this thought, this might be the most spiritual thing we do all year long. And uh, it was just a fantastic time. Uh, if maybe you say dad's not available, he's not around, he can't, he's just not going to be available to, to take uh, your daughter. Uh, if there's a grandfather or an uncle, uh, by all means, you know, plan on signing them up. It just ends up being a great, great night, and so we would love to have you. Um, we make no apologies about, we gear it towards that younger teenage and below, you know, certainly adult uh, adult girls, uh, come with your dad, you know, by all means, but it's a great time for those younger girls, and so uh, make sure that you sign up. We'll have a great time together. Hey, today we are continuing in our series, This Is Not, and uh, we're in our fourth week, and uh, today we are talking about the topic of patience, because uh, everybody loves patience. And um, we're trying to take a very unique look at the scriptures and a unique look at the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, today we're going to be talking about patience in a message that we're calling, as you see on the graphic here, this is not a good time right now. Uh, you ever been in that situation that you're like, this is just not a good time right now. Um, I would have better times that I could exhibit patience, but this is not a good time right now. Um, my prayer for us today as we jump into this and we talk about patience and the need for exhibiting this is that the Holy Spirit would speak to each of us because I know in a room like this, there are some, if not many of us, who are confronted with situations currently where we need patience, and um, because for whatever reason, things aren't going the way we either wanted them to, or it's just not opening yet, and uh, we need to walk in patience. So I pray that today, it wouldn't be so much me that you hear, but the Holy Spirit would speak to you and give you some wisdom on how to walk in patience. So let us open this with a moment of prayer, and then we'll jump into our topic. Father, we thank you for this time, and I pray for all of us that our hearts and our minds and our, our ears, the ears of our soul would be open uh, to hearing your wisdom and that you'd direct us because all of us have to walk through scenarios where we need patience and we pray, Father, that we'd be able to do so effectively and to your glory. So we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, we said from the very beginning of this series that the fruit of the Spirit that Paul will talk about it's rooted in two predominant verses. As you think about this idea that the Scripture calls the fruit of the Spirit, it is anchored in two very key verses. We started off by saying in John 15, Jesus establishes the baseline. He establishes the foundation for this. And he says in John chapter 15, verse 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And then in verse 8, he continues. He says, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Um, we've said out of this passage that in the scriptures, the idea of fruit comes from predominantly two things. It either comes from reproduction of a family of people, or it comes as the byproduct of effort or byproduct of something invested and Jesus is talking about not so much that the fruit is the perspective and the fruit is the goal, remaining in him is the goal. 
And as I remain in Christ and I'm steady in my relationship with the Lord, then the byproduct is that he grows things inside of me. So when he says, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, this is not you go out on your own, you just, you force it out, force some fruit out of yourself. This is if you'll remain in me by default, I'll grow things within you. You'll see attributes. You'll see characteristics starting to develop and grow that come from being rooted in Christ. But if you separate from him, no matter how hard you work at it, no matter how much just self-grit you put into it, you'll find that you're producing nothing. And so the real crux of this whole series is what does it look like to remain, to stay, to abide in Christ? Paul is going to pick up off of this idea in Galatians chapter 5. He's going to start off in verse 16 by saying, I say live by the Spirit. This is the same kind of thought about remaining in Christ. If you live by the Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will develop things in you and through you. And he goes on in verse 22 and says, The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, and patience, and kindness, and he gives this whole list of things, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And one of the things we've established, and we're building into that today, is that there is a real progression in in these fruits. As you look at them up there, the fruit of the Spirit, there is a progression of our relationship with the Lord. It'd be a real mistake for anybody to read this and then go away and say, well, that's just a set of behaviors that I'm just going to check off. Those are a set of behaviors that I'm going to do. What this is depicting is what it looks like to follow the Lord in the progression of our relationship with him. For instance, if we look at the first four, we say the first one is love. And we've, we've established from the very beginning that love is kind of that superior fruit. It is what our relationship with Christ is anchored to and built from. Nobody comes to the Father except the Spirit draw him. And usually when we come to the Lord, it's from an aha moment where we recognize, man, God loves me. God is inviting me into a relationship with him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. And we have a relationship with God that begins to grow and our love for him starts to grow and our love for other people starts to grow. And it's first because that's what we came to him on. And then we said what follows that is joy. Joy follows that love. And we said that the Greek word out for joy there was chara, C-H-A-R-A. And it was a word that carried the idea of to be aware of his grace. That as we enter into this relationship with the Lord, more and more you will find yourself becoming aware of his grace. When things are good and when things are difficult. When things make sense and when they make no sense at all, you'll still be aware of his grace in your life or in that moment or in that season or in that setting. And so we have a joy, kind of a stability that comes from being aware his hand is on me, his purposes are being accomplished in me. Pastor Jessica talked about peace last week. She did a fantastic job of talking about even if versus what if. What if this happens? And she said, even if it does or doesn't happen, this is the peace that the Lord offers us. And it came from a Greek term uh, that talked about stability, that no matter what may happen, there's a stability. So you can see this progression of a relationship with God beginning on love, becoming more aware of his grace, being stable in all things, and then that leads us to patience. Have you ever heard people just say, just be patient? Have you used that with your kids? Oh, I want the cookie. Just be patient. In fact, turn to somebody and say, just be patient. Just be patient. Now, let's be honest. That is so much easier to say than to hear, right? It is really easy to tell somebody, hey, man, just be patient. You're the boss, and they're like, hey, when am I getting a raise? Just be patient. You know, uh, you're the parent, and the kids are asking, when are you going to let me drive? Just be patient. It is much harder for us to hear that. 
But I'm going to push today, I'm going to push in this idea that patience is not something just that you do. I want us to have a better understanding of what the scripture is talking about with patience. So we're going to push on two impartial truths. Impartial truth number one, hopefully you have sermon notes, we'll fill this in. Impartial truth being it's true for you, for me, for every one of us, is that God loves us, you and me, too much to stop at just love, joy, and peace. I want you to absorb that for just a minute. He loves you. He loves me. He loves us too much to just stop at love, joy, and peace. There is something about that next component, patience, that is critical for our relationship with him. Now, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. The reason I put it back up here is I wanted you to see a number. Behind patience, you'll see this number, G3115. Now, with every Greek word, there's a number ascribed to it. Uh, With every Hebrew word in the Old Testament, there's a number ascribed to it. Typically an H and then the number. For Greek, it's G and then the number. For this term, patience... You get the number G3115, and we're going to push into that in just a second. But there's also another verse I want you to see that consistently comes up with the idea of patience or perseverance, and it's James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 2 says this, consider it pure joy. We pushed into that our second week about chara, having an awareness of his grace when I'm going through trials, when I'm going through testings. If I'm aware of his grace, then I can count those things as joy. And then it pushes into uh, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Some translations have patience there. And it comes from this term or this number, G5281. Perseverance or patience in many translations, must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So you have two numbers there. You have G3115 and you have G5281. Now I want to show you what these terms mean because, follow me here, in the New Testament these two terms are like twin brothers. You find them together many, many times. If you find one, you find the other. They're often used in uh, conjunction with one another. Two ideas of patience but have a little slight difference. So we'll put it on the screen as to what they are. The first one, G3115, comes from a Greek word called macrothumia. That Y sounds like a U, macrothumia. And what it means is this idea of patience or long-suffering, forbearance, Uh, But it often involved, follow me here, often involved temper pertaining to other people. Ever have a person wear you out and you have to have patience with that person? If you've got little kids, you have had to have macrothumia. If you've got teenagers, and I've got four of them, a lot of macrothumia, you know. Um, If you're married... They're sweet, they're cute, I get it, but you need patience with one another. If you have a job, you've needed patience with the people around you that you work with. This idea consistently was connected to our relationship with individuals and not allowing anger or wrath to just explode from out within us. This idea of macrothumia, I've got to have patience with other people. And then you have this next term. Once again, the Y sounds like a U, hupomonea. And this carried the same idea as macrothumia, the patience, forbearance, long suffering. But rather than being connected to people, it was connected to circumstances. Let's say my medical condition. It's not connected to a person, but I'm having to be patient with my medical condition. Let's say my finances. It's not connected to a person that I'm having to be patient with, I, but, but I've got a circumstance. I've got a situation. You, you might have a career blockage. You're, you're working at a place that you can't seem to get out of that kind of uh, pigeonhole, so to say. 
And uh, it's not so much a person, it's just that the industry or the sales or those kinds of things aren't going. I'm trying to sell a home, and it's not going. I can't blame a person, but I'm having to be patient with the circumstance. You have two words that are commonly used throughout the New Testament. One is a patience with people. And another is patience with circumstances, and they often run in conjunction with one another. Speaking of circumstances, when you uh, come across Hebrews chapter 12, it says uh, that um, of Jesus, it's talking about how he considered it pure joy, this idea of of what was before him. It says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, Endured the cross. That term endured was this term hupomonea. The idea that the circumstance of the cross. He was willing to be patient or persevere or forbearance with the cross ahead of him. Why? On behalf of people. Uh, The apostle Paul will pray for the church in Colossae. And he'll use both terms. We actually prayed this prayer this passage over our entire church a few weeks ago. He says in Colossians chapter 1, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance. There's G5281. That's our hupomonea. And and patience, G3115, macrothumia. So one is the circumstances. And then patience with people. And it says, and joyfully, that's our term, chara, awareness of his grace, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints. You see these two terms consistently, and listen to me, there's no getting around this. As you and I follow the Lord, he leverages, he leverages circumstances and people within our lives to develop the attribute of patience. Patience is not just something that you go download and I just got to, I'm just going to force some patience out of me. He's going to take circumstances and he's going to take the people in our lives and as we remain in him, he will develop and grow within us this fruit, this attribute called patience. And I was thinking, um, this week about stories. I was thinking about, you know, what stories can I share about my life, you know, that I've had to uh, walk with this, whether that be through circumstances or whether it be through individuals, whether it be through people. And, um, and I got to thinking about this idea that patience, you know this as well as I do, sometimes it's on a daily component. It's like a one-time thing. It's with the waiter or it's with the cashier or it's just with a random run-in with somebody. It could be in traffic and you need patience. It can also be a season and uh, you can be in it for months. You can be in it for years even. I'm trying to be patient through this. And I was thinking about what, what story do I share? Do I share something about circumstance? Do I share something about a person? Do I share something that's kind of like a daily one time I had to be patient in the moment? Or do I share like a season? I was in a season of having to be patient. And then I had this thought following that. I thought, you know, I don't even know that the people would be interested in my story because they have their own stories. Everyone sitting there has their own story of whether it be daily or season. And the challenge for us is when we hear stories, we start to compare. Like I might tell my stories of patience and you might be, oh, what are you complaining about? Wait till you hear my story. Or maybe you hear somebody else's story and you think, why am I complaining? Man, they have it way worse than I do. And then this is the thought that I had. I was like, Lord, I don't even know that I should share a story because... We all have our own stories, but how, I'm just talking, I talk to the Lord out loud. I'm, I'm like, Lord, how do we do this? How do, you, how do you remain in you, whether it be for a isolated thing that I need patience, or whether it be I'm just in an extended season of patience, and it, whether it's a circumstance or whether it's a person, how do we do this? And I felt like the Holy Spirit whispered something to me, that I had never connected to the idea of patience. I'm sitting there in my car just kind of talking to myself, talking to the Lord about this, and I felt like the Holy Spirit whispered to me, give us this day our daily bread. You see, in the Lord's Prayer it says, 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then it says, give us this day our daily bread. And for me, I had always quantified that verse in relation to resources. That we need a measure of resources, a measure of finances, or a measure of food, or a measure of, of something tangible that we need. And this idea that he gives us daily resource, daily bread, daily provision. And as I'm driving there, I'm just kind of having this aha moment that even with patience, it's a daily bread thing. So like I have to have patience on Monday. I have to have patience on Wednesday. I might have to have patience for 2017, 2018, 2019. With four teenagers, I need a lot of it. Y'all should pray for me. <laughs> but here's what I've come to understand. The Lord does not back up a semi of patience and just unload it all, and I have it all at my disposal on that one given day, and I'll just work out of that entire base. I get daily bread. I get daily provision. I get daily strength. And I was thinking, no matter whether I'm dealing with a person or a circumstance, a situation that's isolated or an extended season, I, you, we need that daily provision, that daily bread, and it becomes even more important that I remain in him. Because as I remain in him, then that daily bread is there. If I separate from him, apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you won't get what you need. And understanding that in your life and my life, he just simply loves you too much to leave you at love, joy, and peace. There's also the patience because of what it develops and the necessity of me remaining in him. And that brings me to number two, impartial truth number two, is that if that's true, then when we, you or me, are amidst patient issues, we have an option. Because the tendency for a lot of us is to think that when we're going through things that we don't have an option. We're stuck. We're stuck in this marriage. Or we're stuck at this job. Or we're stuck with this condition. Or I'm stuck with those finances. I'm just stuck in this situation and not recognizing that we have an option as to how we handle it. Option one. For a lot of people, and I would be lying if I said I've never tipped over into this. I've tipped over into this too. Is that option one, we can convince ourselves that we are alone or somehow being punished. When you're going through something and the Lord is allowing you to have to wait and to have patience developed. When you get tired and you get frustrated, you can start to feel alone. You can start to feel like you don't understand why. And almost that like patience is like if I just have to sit here passively and just keep my complaint repressed. Like that's patience. I'm just going to be patient and not say anything. And, um, and I think sometimes the mistake for us, myself included, is that we can try and put the Lord's working and his pace consistent to that which we're experiencing in other environments or within our society. I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say, for instance, how society progresses or has progressed. Let's say you want to communicate with somebody from Florida to California, and it used to be that you'd write a letter, right? You remember those old days? Kids are like, what is the letter? You know, you used to, dear John, and you'd write out your thoughts, you know, and then you fold it up in an envelope, put a stamp on it, put it in the mailbox, and then it goes and it gets to them after a certain number of days. Nowadays, kids, they use the mailbox just to receive stuff from Amazon. That's it. That's all the mailbox is for. But then, you know, you have the advancement from mail. You have telegrams that I can call something in and it's sent. Much faster. And then, y'all remember these days, fax machines, you know, where we would fax something, and we could get it to them right away. Pretty, pretty cool. And then this mind-blowing idea, email, that I could, on my computer, type out a message and send it, and hear a whoosh, you know, and it gets to them. Nowadays, it's text. Everything's text. I mean, kids these days, they don't even look at their phone. They can do a blindfold, just thumbs that just know where the keys are. They send off a text, and it's gone. One of the challenges is that we think the Lord moves at that same rate. 
And so when I pray and he doesn't text back, um, when I'm trying to ask him for patience, but he doesn't respond in that same speed. You know, I'll give you another example. You know, it used to be that you cooked with an oven, and we still do, but that was, that was the means. And then you get gas grills, and I can do things much faster. And then you get a microwave, and we can do it inside of two minutes. And then you think fast food, and now I can get a steak in 30 seconds, you know. And sometimes we think the Lord should move that fast, but he, he, he doesn't do that. So we have option one. We have option one is to feel like somehow we're alone. Or option two is this, is to recognize the Lord is with us and he is developing within us. So let me push into your world for a second. Whether you be in a situation, you're in a situation that's involving people or circumstances. And the Lord is forging this component called patience within you. One of the options that you have is to think, Lord, I don't even know why and I don't know where you are or to understand he is with me and he is developing something inside of me. Now, there's a term that I've got in your notes that I came across this week. I'll openly admit I had never heard of this term until this week as I was reading, kind of studying some things. But the Hebrew understanding of patience, this is an interesting term. We'll put it on the screen. It's there in your notes. It's the Hebrew term called savlanut. Have y'all heard of that? Savlanut. It's an interesting term, this idea of the Hebrew culture around savlanut. Um, it came from two predominant words, one which simply meant burdens or suffering. It was something that was heavy. It was anything that was heavy, anything that was a burden. It could be emotional, it could be spiritual, it could be physical. It was something that was just simply heavy. And then the other word came from this meaning of a porter, somebody that carried something. Just like if you were to go to, a, let's say, a hotel and somebody meets you at the, at the road and carries in your bags, that would be like a porter, somebody who carries. In the ancient, it was somebody that would travel with another, carrying their bags on their behalf. This idea of savlanut, which was very understood and very common in that ancient culture, in that Hebrew culture, this idea of one who had the ability to carry heavy burdens. Listen to me. When I read that and was coming across that, for me, there were a couple of verses that just started to kind of aha moment for me. Uh, for instance, Isaiah 53 says, surely he took up our infirmities and he carried our sorrows. He, he comes along and he savlanutes. He carries that which you and I can't carry. He asks you and me to put that burden down so that he will carry it because he can bear it. Um, I was thinking of 1 Peter chapter 5. Peter, who, who would have known this culture, he says this, this idea of humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. And then he says, cast all your cares, cast all your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. He wants to carry your bags. He wants to carry your heaviness. Can I, can I just suggest this, that when you're going through a situation, whether it be a person-related deal, whether it be a circumstance-related deal, whether it be in the moment, momentary, isolated moment, or whether it be in an extended season, he extends to you and to me the invitation to let me carry that thing for you. And let's be honest, there are sometimes you cannot detach from it. You can't detach from your kids. Or you can't detach from your medical condition. And so sometimes when you can't just cast that specific to him, per se, he carries you instead. He carries you in the midst of it. And so where I would be weak, I'm strong. Where I would be overcome, I'm not overcome. Where I would just be despondent, I'm no longer that. Because he carries me in this situation. Patience isn't something I just force out and I'm just patient with people. It's because I remain in him. He carries me through these situations and he begins to grow these things inside of me. This week I was thinking about patience and I was thinking about, I wonder if there's a website for patience, like patience.com. And so I, I, I Googled it, www.patience.com, and this is what I wrote. And nothing came up. Nobody's had the time to write it yet. Um, so um, 
There's no patience.com. So that's wide open for anybody who wants to go develop a brand. Um, but as I had typed it, um, I was looking at this. And uh, I, don't, I don't normally do this kind of thing with messages, but I was just looking at it. And some things were just, my, my mind just started going with it. And I thought, www. And these are the three words that just popped off as I was just looking at it. Three words just popped off for me instantly. And they were the words wondering, waiting, and warring. Um, when you're wondering, I, I don't know how. I, I don't know when. I don't know who. I think all of us have been in the context of we're wondering, wondering what the Lord wants us to do here, wondering what they're going to do, wondering whether this will work out or not. We're wondering. There's an uncertainty that comes sometimes as you follow the Lord, and I'm wondering. Sometimes there's a waiting. It's like you know how things are going to play out, but you're here, and it's there, retirement. I'm here, and it's there, and I've got 10 years till I can even get there. There's a huge delay. Or it could be some kind of condition. It, it could be any number of things. But there's a gap between where you are and what you know is coming. There's a delay. And I have to be patient here. Or, or maybe it's warring. There's conflict. It could be that you have tension around person or circumstance. We fight a lot. We're always nagging. We're always bickering. We're always just chipping at one another. Or in that context, that circumstance, it's just chipping at me. I feel like I'm in conflict. Wondering, waiting, warring. And the necessity of patience. And remember what we said patience was. Patience, whether it be circumstance or whether it be person related, is me staying rooted in Christ and allowing him to carry the weight of it. And if I can't detach the weight to him, then it's allowing him to carry me in the process. Staying rooted in him. Give us this day our daily bread. And then that led me to dot .com. And for me, as I looked at dot .com, I just thought of the term complete. Because James said in James 1, make sure, make sure you don't cheat patience. Make sure you don't cheat it. Because if you don't cheat it, then you will be, as it says, mature and complete, not lacking anything. That the Lord desires for you and me as we follow the Lord to develop a completion. And I've got to have patience to get to that. In John 15, he says that my joy may be in you and your joy, your joy may be complete. This idea of completion. I just was thinking, www patience.com that for us to be developed with the Lord and to see his purposes come to fulfillment and accomplishment it's important that I have patience um, I was walking in a store this week and uh, this lady was coming at me she was exacerbated I could tell she was angry frustrated and uh, is anybody in here eavesdrop you listen to other people's conversations I do it unapologetically I just absolutely do <laughs> And um, this lady's walking uh, in my direction, and you could tell she's frustrated, and I can see she's kind of chirping, and I'm like, I'm interested in what she's saying because she's agitated. You never know when a sermon illustration's coming. So, um, and sure enough, she comes by, and I heard one statement. She's moving at a pretty good clip, and she's by me before I ever heard any the finish of this statement, but right as she passes me, I hear this statement. I'm just trying to explain to them. I'm just trying to explain to them, and I wanted to turn and follow her and hear the rest of it. But I thought, wow, what a statement that we all use. I'm just trying to explain to them. You know, we say it of somebody at work that's creating a patience issue for us. I'm just trying to explain to them how I feel. I'm just trying to explain to them how this can work. Or at home with a spouse or with your kids. I'm just trying to explain to them that this is going to be for their betterment. I'm just trying to explain to them that they're headed towards a ditch. I'm just trying to explain to them. I'm just trying to explain to them. I'm just trying to explain to them. Patience. And I was thinking, how often do we find ourselves in that setting? And the necessity 
of having this attribute of patience. When I'm wondering, waiting, or warring, patience brings me to that point of completion. I would just echo once again, I don't think this is something that you can force out. I think this is something that the Lord grows within us as we remain in him in those situations. And I want to close us out with a visual, a verse and a visual. Coming back to our starting point, John 15 was, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. And I was thinking about coffee. Um, we have coffee drinkers in here. How many of you are coffee drinkers? Yeah, I, I'm a coffee drinker for sure. And um, there are different approaches to coffee, right? You'll have to just give me a little latitude on this illustration. Um, it'll make sense in just a second. But there are different ways of making coffee. And this is one that's interesting. This is an instant packet. And so uh, you just have to have the water and pour this in. And I don't think anybody thinks this one tastes good. Um, this is more for the addict that just, I got to need it. You know, I don't even need the water, <laughs> you know. Um, so that one we're going to leave out. Um, there's, there's a couple different ways of making coffee. And one is that has become kind of popular lately is these singles. Um, and if you're not a coffee drinker but you're a tea drinker, same kind of application here. So you've got these coffee bags similar to tea bags. And uh, what you do is obviously you take the bag, you have your hot water, and you dip it in and pull it out. And dip it in. And pull it out. And as you dip it in, the hot water connects with the grounds in there, and it transforms the water into coffee. And you're in control. you got to follow me on this. You're in control here. The problem with this, with junkies like me, is that this doesn't create a strong enough coffee. It creates a thinner coffee, and it creates maybe the smells not as thick, Right? Then you've got the beans, and these are for the pros, you know, who will grind up their own grounds, and they'll pour their grounds into a canister, and the hot water goes into the canister, and it just brews. You have dipping, and you have brewing, and then that canister releases the coffee into the pot, and you pour your coffee. And I was thinking about this in relation to patience. Hot water trials is that... Often, follow me here, often we want to be able to dip in and dip out. Lord, I, I, I get it that I need a little patience, but I also want out. It's hot. It's hot. Oh, I'm in. I want out. I'm in. God, I'm tired of this situation. I'm tired of this work environment. I need a new job. I'm in. I, I need out of this marriage. I'm in. My, my kids need to move away. I'm in, I'm moving away. <laughs> I'm in, out, in, out. And the problem, the problem is it generates a weaker faith, a thinner faith. Our worship is thinner. And I know that we don't like to be surrounded by the hot water to be brewed, so to say. But it does generate a thicker faith. It does generate a thicker conviction. It does generate a richer worship. Um, I just would suggest this idea, remain in me. Remain in me. Is that Jesus is not saying, just be in me for a little bit and it gets hot, pull out. In me and it's not comfortable, pull out. I would say that this idea of all these fruits, certainly patience, is rooted in remain in me. And if you'll remain in me and let that which I take you through just to brew win you and around you, I will transform you. And it will be a stronger faith. It will be a stronger worship. It will be a stronger conviction. Patience is not something you force out. It is something that is brewed inside of you. Whether it be through people whether it be through circumstances, whether it be through a daily exchange, or whether it be through a season, my challenge for all of us is that we would remain in him. And as we do so, he will grow the fruit from within us. This morning, I wanted to pray for us. And so if you'll join me as we pray. 
And I know in a room like this, there are numerous people that are going through patience issues. And I would encourage you today that you have an option of how you carry yourself through this moment or through this season. And you can either be despondent and feel like you're alone or being mistreated or that God is punishing you in some way. Or you can recognize that he is with you. He is going to carry you if you'll allow him. And he will brew something from within you that is much stronger than you would have imagined had you not had this moment or this season. Father, this morning, all across this room, we come before you in prayer. And we invite you, Lord. We invite you to move in our lives in a way that you see fit. We recognize that you are a good God. And you never do anything unjustly. And you never do anything to our detriment. And so if we're in a setting in which you're brewing patience within us, Lord, we offer ourselves... As best we can, we want to remain in you that you might bear fruit from within us. Jesus, I pray if there's anybody in here that has been discouraged over the past couple of weeks or so, Lord, that you would encourage them this week, that they would be strong for the course that you have them on. And Lord, that they would feel the savlanute, they would feel you carry them, even in this time or this season. Father, I pray that you'd bless your people. This morning with every head bowed and eyes closed, maybe you're here today and you do not have a relationship with Christ. You've never said yes to Jesus. Before you leave, would you offer your life to him? I don't believe you're here by accident. I believe he wants to have you remain in him and get to know him and have him develop things in your life. But it begins with that love, recognizing that God so loved you that he sent his son. And if you recognize that and are ready to respond to that, would you pray this prayer with me and just say, Jesus, today, in response of your love for me, I receive it. I open my heart and my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I acknowledge my sin that separates, but that you have forgiven at the cross. Help me to follow you from this day forward. Jesus, I pray that you'd bless your people as we go, that your name would always be lifted high. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Guys, we're so honored that you're here today. Before I dismiss you, just a couple quick things. If maybe you've prayed that prayer for the first time today, or maybe you're returning to the Lord. Down front at these two tables, we have Bibles and we have some materials we'd love to put in your hands. We'll have a staff member over here at this table, and we'll have a staff member over here at this table. We'd love to be able to greet you and shake your hand. If you're new with us, welcome once again. It's been an honor having you. I'll be down front. would love to shake your hand if you don't have to rush away too quickly. Lastly, grab one of those summer calendars. Make sure you're updated. Sign up Father Daughter Dance. That'd be great. And then tonight, we have the youth dive in, so hope your kids can come out. God bless you. Have a great week.